Hey everybody, Syntax77 back with you for another edition of SynChats, the show where we have virtual conversations about all things backpacking, in between me editing the feature length videos that is, which everyone so patiently waits for. And that actually brings me right into the topic at hand for this installment. Uh, it's a frequent question, or one of the more frequent questions, I should say, that I get, and that is, hey, Syntax, what kind of camera are you using, or what camera gear are you using, um, to a lesser extent, what editing software or PC are you using, um, which I may get into a little bit, but today I will focus on the actual physical camera gear that I bring, um, my thoughts on it, uh, different pieces, as well as pieces that I've used in the past that I've retired and um, we'll just go through it all and then maybe some thoughts on um, other things as well uh, one being chiefly that the gear the camera yeah in my opinion one of the less important pieces of the puzzle uh, compared to just uh, content and creativity and just getting out there and, and filming and having something interesting to show but that being said let's get into the gear now, I carry it all in a front pack uh, by a company called uh, Ribs. So this is the Ribs front pack. Uh, right here, I believe this is a large 11 liter model. You can see it, uh, that's the back of it. it. Zips in the front there and it goes, I wear it right on me. It's like above, above the hips, um, but kind of below the chest. And I wear that on the front of me to carry all of my gear because I do have a smaller backpack nowadays, which by the way, um, I've said it before, I always make sure to point it out in the videos. I don't include my camera gear in the base weights. And um, I, I try to be upfront and honest about that. And that's because I'm not trying to mislead people by not including those weights. But I mean, if I wasn't out there filming to the extent that I am, I wouldn't be carrying all this stuff. So the average person probably doesn't care about that. So when you talk, or when you hear me talk about base weights, I'm not including this kit here, um, which if you want to see me wearing it, the Cranberry Wilderness video, I think is the first video where I had this and you can see me a little bit um, actually wearing this thing. But anyway, it goes right on the front of me, keeps the load right up and balanced and it keeps all my camera kit readily available to me because my current pack, the hip belt pockets are not very big. So the front pack keeps everything right there. And since I have it as an added bonus, I also throw snacks in there and anything else that I need kind of um, on me. And sometimes stuff from my pack that is included in my base weight, I might throw in here um, just to even out my load. It's a little more comfortable. But today I just have it stripped down to the camera gear. So the, the snack pockets are empty. Let's get right into this thing here. I'll just start pulling stuff out. Oh, okay, and actually, Let's get into uh, retired gear first, okay? Um, this here, stand up and show you. I'll sit this back down. This is a flip minnow, okay? I have not used this uh, for any videos that you've seen posted, I don't believe, since 2012. Uh, but I did use this for my first couple videos, longer videos, that is, um, between 2011 and 2012. The flip camera, it does 720p, no image stabilizer, so it was really a pain to keep this thing steady and even despite my efforts um, without an optical image stabilizer, um, it made for some shaky video, but it was, especially for back in 2011, I loved this thing and it's the reason probably um, that my channel got started in the first place because I used to carry this and believe it or not, a cell phone um, and those are, Two of my most viewed videos, because they're also two of my oldest videos um, of, all, of, of all time, most views were made with this little guy right here. But I don't use this anymore. Um, the biggest video I did with this was the uh, hiking the abandoned turnpike where we did the uh, whole length of the abandoned turnpike. And that kind of worked in my favor because it gave it kind of a Blair Witch vibe. But anyway, so there's that old gear there. That's made for, like I said, some shaky video, but it was nice and convenient. Next up, what else we got in here? Okay, let's just get right to it. The main camera that I use, starting in, I think I got this for Christmas in 2012. Now, nowadays, it's actually the camera I'm filming with right now, which you can't see. Um, I should have brought a mirror, that would have made sense. But honestly, um, it, what I'm using now, from 2015 onward, is a Sony, HDR CX380. 
Uh, it's like a mid, mid to entry level HD camera, does 1080p and all that. I'll get into the specifics of that in a minute. But um, before that, I was using the Samsung here um, between 2012, 2015. So most of the videos that if you've watched um, my videos before, most of them that you've seen were made with this guy right here. And it did me well. The Samsung H300. Now you can see here, it's got a rubber band on it nowadays. And the reason for that is because the uh, door finally broke after being opened and closed about 15,000 times. It finally lost its ability to stay open. It was actually on the, um, what video was that? Uh, Dolly Sod's winter video where I went with TJ and the gang. Within the first couple miles of the first day of that four day trip, I opened this up and everything looked like an Atari game as far as colors. It was, or even less colors than Atari. It was straight RGB. Everything was in green, red, and blue. <laughs> so I just had to hope throughout that whole trip that um, I was actually recording f my, my film in, in proper color and it did turn out it was just the um a wire must have broken here that being said that's not really a super ding against this samsung um i've dropped these things off of tree stands into the snow i've taken it on tons of trips i beat the heck out of this thing so it um it took a beating now the reason i use the camera i use now which again is very similar in form factor to this but it is the sony hdr cx 380 uh, my dad had Sony cameras, a couple of them, over the lifespan that I had this Samsung. And what I noticed over that uh, lifespan was his optical image stabilizer was much smoother and a little more subtle and just smoother than on my Samsung. That being said, coming from the flip to the Samsung was an amazing difference. And it made all the difference in the world because I'm often just walking like this. Whenever there's shots of me just talking, I'm just holding the camera like this and doing my best to stay steady but it's the optical image stabilizer that really does the work there. I often tell people that I would say for hiking and outdoor videos, it's the number one thing you wanna worry about is probably gonna be a nice image stabilizer. Again, the Samsung got the job done, but the Sony I find to be superior and for the same kind of price range. Another thing is the mic that I noticed on my dad's cameras while I was using this. Um, just audio quality was a little bit of an edge to the Sony versus the Samsung and um, there's an automatic wind cut feature on the Sony, which is nice, which is basically just a bass cut that kicks in when the camera mic notices that there's a excess amount of um, wind noise, which is just basically bass and some higher mid end stuff kicks in and cuts that off before I was doing all that in post editing. So I'd have to go in when the wind came in and drop the bass. not drop the bass in a cool way, but cut the bass. Um, so that is one less thing for me to worry about with the Sony. So I do like the audio quality on the Sony a little more, but the Samsung was decent. But anyway, that's not what I carry now. So from um, 2015 on, I carry the Sony that we're filming with now. Uh, I got some more thoughts on that, but I'll open into that as we go through some other items in here. So it's all gonna come together, I promise. Or maybe it's not. Um, next thing I have is a little tripod. It's a, um, I think it's a gorilla pod. It's not terribly heavy, but I can wrap it around trees and other stuff to give it more height like that. You know, I can get creative with it or I can sit it right on the ground. Um, this works really well. It has a quick release on it so that I can pop out the, uh, pop the camera right off of it if I want to leave that connected, but I often don't. I'll just screw it on for the rare shot that I have it on a tripod. Most of my shots are not static. Uh, they're on the move because I don't, um, you know, Les Stroud, all the credit in the world to him. First thing people often say about him is that he does those shots where he like has a camera three miles away and he has to do the hike twice. That's awesome. And uh, that's why he is where he is and why I'm here in my uh, home office because <laughs> if I'm on a three-day trip and doing a loop and I need to get back home nine hours away um, I don't want to waste a lot of time also I'm often with my friends and I don't want to take them out of the experience and burden them with my um, filming I try to be as passive with my filmmaking when others are around as possible and not make it feel like they're on some sort of movie shoot so 
I do all my stuff pretty much on the move. But sometimes at camp, this is a great addition. It's not that much, it was probably 15 or 20 bucks. And it's a Gorilla Pod, I think, or it's a Joby, or maybe those are the same people. I've had two of these over the years. One of them I, um, I think I lost. But anyway, this is a great little addition. Doesn't weigh too much, keep it right in my pack. Brings me next to battery power. And I have two different options. I don't carry them both. Oh, I left it upstairs. Hold on, I'm gonna teleport. Oh, all right, got it. I got this here and this here. They're both by Rav Power. Um, this is 10,000 and something, let's call it 10,400 milliamp hour charger. By comparison, to give you some relative data, an iPhone battery, I think. I don't know about, the old ones for 1500. My Android phone is 3000, so that's a lot of charge power. And I use this to recharge my GoPro, which I'll show you in a second, spoiler alert, and my main camera, as well as cell phone or anything else. But it's a ton of power. This is great when my wife or someone else comes along too. This one is by them as well. This one's 7,800, so a little bit less, but this is cool because it's also a, and I think I've shown this on the videos, but it's also a uh, lantern. And I've tested it. If it's fully charged and I don't charge anything off of this, I've got it to run for three days. So very little draw on that lantern, so I'm able to use this around camp. Sometimes if I'm going away from camp, um, or I'm on a canoe trip and I'll leave this on shore, and I just leave it on, it's like a nice little, um, indicator of where camp is and then I can come back and charge my gadgets on it too so this is the rav power I believe it's called just uh I don't know just look up 7800 milliamp uh lantern usb charger just type lantern usb charger but I do really like this a lot um, it really depends on my trip which one I bring but I've been leaning towards this this one right here and um instead of this one, but they both work great. Same idea, right? Oh, this one has two ports on it though. So I could charge two items at once. What's next? Keep going with the battery theme. Backup batteries, which is another reason that I'm needing these less and less, but I still out of paranoia because the level of filming I'm doing carry something to always recharge. But for convenience nowadays, I've built up a collection of batteries. Whoops, I'm also dropping my spare memory card. Uh, I have 16 gig of internal memory on my Sony Handycam, uh, but I also have a 32 gig card that I put in the camera body and then a backup 32 gig card that's just in this bag of batteries. But honestly, uh, 32 gig plus my GoPro is usually plenty. Back to the batteries. Sony came with this little 500 milliamp hour battery. Doesn't hang very far off of the camera, which is very convenient in terms of form factor and also convenient for them because it's a cheaper battery, but doesn't last all that long. So went right online and got a two pack of these. They are generic. They're wasabi power. You probably may have seen those on Amazon because they're only like 30 bucks for two of them instead of like that or more for one of the official Sony's. These work fine. Throw them in my bag. This is 2,500, uh, yeah, 2,540 milliamp hours. So five times the power in this. Yeah, it hangs off the end of my camera, makes it a little longer and goofier, but this is gonna last me all day easily. So really, I have two of these, another one, the original one. Um, I'm going pretty good. I rarely have to recharge off of the USB power chargers, okay? And again, I'm, I'm going into fine detail here. For those of you who uh, don't want that much detail, well, feel free to skip around. That's the beauty of YouTube. Uh, here's a wire. That's exciting. This is wire that came with the RAV Power. It's just a real thin, low profile wire. I like that because I am still weight conscious here. And the end pulls apart. Now, I know I'm going to lose this one of these days, but this converts it to, that's the hookup for a USB as well as my GPS. And then this is the standard Android um, hookup for my phone and my wife's phone. So I've got a wire and then just for redundancy and safety, I usually carry a second wire because if I break this tip or bend it, I don't want to be out of luck out there for filming. Mm -hmm. Various AA and AAA batteries, okay? 
I carry my batteries in here too. A uh, little cloth here. This is just one I grabbed for example. I have a larger one that I prefer, but just a little cloth for the lens. They also make something, I don't have it here, um, I have it around, but I don't often bring it, but um, it's called a lens pen. It's about the size of a pen, as you might imagine, and that's good for uh, wiping your lens off too. But just a little cloth like that is fine. What else we got? That knocks out this one side, except for some other boring AA batteries. We'll get over here, which is like my GoPro side. You know what else I want to mention before I forget? I have this as well. It's in my pocket right now because it's being used. It's a Zoom uh, H1 handy recorder. I recently picked this up just this year, like February 2015. I got it in my pocket now because I'm running a lav mic, um, which is connected, pinned in here, which I'm getting the audio for this right now. My cat is tearing the heck out of the uh, chair over there. Thank you. Speaking of audio. Um, I got that originally when I did the Mount Washington Winter Ascent video. I really was nervous about wind noise. So I bought that and I mic'd the inside of my uh, winter jacket kind of up in my uh, face mask. And that was my backup audio for that video that was a little protected from the wind. So that's why I originally bought it. Now I do occasionally bring it, not necessarily with the full lav mic set up like I did on that winter trip. But this is nice because I can set this... Um, I can set my camera far away. I can have this kind of hidden behind me somewhere, run it, and then I got audio um, that I can sync up later and post without um, sounding like I'm 800, you know, meters away um, like I really am. So sometimes I do bring that out in the field. And it does have pretty decent built-in mic right on there, stereo, which is nice. So I found that to be pretty handy. All right, moving on. Back to the GoPro, right? All right, so I do have a GoPro. Now what surprises a lot of people is uh, up until 2014, February, no GoPro. And most people just assume because of the watching outdoor videos, I guess people would ask me what kind of GoPro I had all the time for my videos. And, um, and I didn't, I um, finally got one. Uh, like I said, February, 2014, the first video I ever used it on was the Adirondacks winter hammock camping video and uh, really put it to use there. I love the GoPro. There it is. It is great for, the biggest asset for me is inclement weather because there were early videos where it rained or something and there's just no footage of that because I couldn't risk destroying my main camera. The GoPro I can put in a waterproof case, which I carry separate. I'll get to the differences here in a second. Waterproof case I carry separate um, and that allows me to do inclement water as well as underwater shots for canoe and stuff. And then also I do like the wide angle. Sometimes I will purposely bust out the GoPro just to get a wide angle effect because it's really good at that. That being said, that leads me to uh, why I would never, I would never have this as my main camera. And I think some people ask me sometimes for suggestions on the first camera. And if you don't already own some sort of traditional camera with a zoom, Speaking of which, this, the zoom motor on the Sony is quieter than the Samsung. I had to edit that motor noise out of a lot of videos. But anyway, a regular quote unquote camera with zoom and everything and a nice viewfinder, you're gonna want that first, I would think. I wouldn't want just the GoPro, I would go nuts. Yes, you can get a little add-on piece where you can see through it, but um, I think that's gonna drain your battery down as far as I know. And I also think most of the time you use that to set your shot up, but it's not like you're looking through it all the time. Again, I don't own that but I'm just assuming, I think, I think that's how that works. Um, so this is good for the situations I just described, okay? I do like it a lot for that, but I would never want it as my only primary camera. I do uh, take things a little step further. For those of you interested, I go into settings and I turn ProTune on and I set it up for more of a flat picture, which basically means when you look at it, it looks really dull, like the colors aren't popping. Uh, that's because by default, uh, GoPro, which is normally a good thing, applies some nice color enhancement, color correction to it to really make your um, video look good depending on the conditions. Since I'm using two cameras though, I put this on that ProTune mode so it comes across in that really dull kind of flat look, but that's basically more of a blank canvas for me. Uh, it's actually a more realistic depiction of, of the environment being filmed. So then I can come in 
and I can match the two camera shots. So basically I just go into Adobe Speed Grade and I can match the GoPro color look to this. So it's a little less obvious when I switch between the GoPro and the primary camera. Um, speaking though, go a little deeper, of the waterproof case, that's what it comes with by default, right? Because that's the cool feature you're after, of course. But the audio is absolutely horrendous um, when you go through a waterproof case because the plastic that's completely sealed basically acts as a high pass filter and you end up with this really bassy sound and also some cricks and creaks and all kinds of weird artifacts of sound from the case itself. It's not a great thing. So I highly recommend to everybody to get a, um, that asks me if for the type of filming I'm doing, if you want to try to do that sort of thing, get a skeleton case and I'm showing it there. It has the cutouts in it. It's really just a case for a little bit of, or a decent amount of protection, as well as the ability to still be used on different um, attachments and accessories and stuff, but it's not completely sealed. So if I drop this in the water, I'm still screwed, but my audio still doesn't sound as good as the camcorder, but the audio sounds a lot better that way. And then even, then if I completely take it out of case, if I know that I'm gonna, usually around camp, I'm in a decent environment, I'll still take it completely out of the case and just hold it like that. That's when you're gonna get the best audio out of it because it's completely exposed. Quick little tip there, or maybe something that people don't realize when they buy these. Got the head strap. Um, I find myself using this less and less now. Little overrated. Now it's not overrated, but when you need this, you know, camera attached to your head, it's a godsend because your hands are free. And there's times canoeing or it's wet and you want your hands available, you're doing something where you might slip and fall, you don't wanna, you wanna value your safety more than filming, pop this on, you're good to go. That being said, hair and makeup, hair and makeup, no one? Oh, I forgot I'm here by myself. Hope my hair is okay, God forbid. Um, that being said, when you wear that, uh, don't expect a smooth shot. I mean, it's, it's great for capturing what's going on, but it, everything's going to have that kind of wobbling, tilty look to it. So it's uh, not as great as one might initially think that you can just, you know, walk around with this strap to your head. You're going to get that particular kind of look, which for me personally, I like kind of a smoother uh, look in my videos. So I use that when I have to. There's also, I like it more, I don't have it here, but they call it a quick clip. I have it around here somewhere. It looks kind of like this. And it works as a good base, kind of like this does, to keep that standing up. But you can quickly clip it to your hat frame if you're wearing a hat backwards. And then you don't have to worry about putting that big goofy strap on. A little less stable, but it's nice. So that's a quick clip. You might want to check that out if you're switching constantly between wearing it and not wearing it. And that pretty much goes through all the camera gear. This isn't technically camera gear, but this is my Garmin Oregon 650 uh, GPS. Love this thing. It's uh, definitely very high end, much more high end than I probably would have bought if I didn't do the videos and the blog and upload all of my GPS data to share with people. I uh, probably maybe wouldn't have um, spent as much on it if not for that. But because I do, it's great. And that's why I'm bringing it up in, in this segment here. I use this to record all of the GPS track data and um, waypoints and stuff. It has a color touch screen. It's really quick and easy for me to use, which again means that I can be on the go and just tapping through using this thing, dropping pins, making sure it's recording. I put some lithium ion batteries in here. Uh, the Energizer Ultimate yeah, I think they're the ultimate lithiums, double A's, two of them. And uh, in good weather, like warmish weather, I can go easily a whole three day trip on that one set of batteries, recording my breadcrumbs and track data all day. So I do carry that, a little extra weight, but worth it for um, putting that GPS data, which I know not a lot of you probably uh, need that much info, but those of you who do seem to like it. So I like to keep doing that. And then that's pretty much everything else. So that's all my camera gear. But again, all you really need is a camera. I mean, I got, like I said, plenty of videos that did just fine. Actually, I used to just put up videos completely not thinking anybody would actually watch them. It was just for fun. It was just for me and the people I was with. 
and then for some reason people started other people started watching them but the point is it's there wasn't on any amazing gear none of this is really amazingly high-end gear just getting out there and remembering to film is the uh, toughest thing I think because you're in the moment and you're trying to have fun and so are your friends and it's easy to just go with it and not film and I don't blame anybody for not or for doing that but that's my biggest tip um, don't worry about the camera and stuff just get a camera whatever you can afford or get your hands on so that's really all I got to say about that as far as the software I don't think I'm gonna I'll keep this video somewhat or shorter than it could be but I won't go and show the actual editing software if there's any um, interest in that feel free to let me know and if there is maybe I'll do a separate quick video sometime but just real quick I do have a um, Intel i7 uh, system here it's running the Adobe Premiere or the Adobe Creative Suite as they call it so I pay a monthly fee for that and I basically get the whole package of Adobe products Photoshop uh, Premiere which is Premiere Pro which is the video editing um, audition which is for audio all kinds of uh, the whole package I get and I run that on here two monitors these are some um, kind of old-school at this point from the 90s event 2020 uh, studio reference monitors so they give me a kind of a clean picture of the uh, audio picture that is of the sound and then over here I usually keep these out of the shop for these videos but I have some Sennheiser studio um, reference headphones nothing super high-end but they are reference headphones yeah Sennheiser's that my wife got me and most headphones and speakers color the sound they hype it up they make it pretty almost like that uh, uh, almost like the video mode stuff I was talking about for the GoPro but when you're editing most people myself included want to get a really flat kind of accurate representation because I don't know what you're gonna play this stuff on so I actually sometimes go through the speakers but nowadays I'm used to just going through the headphones because I use them so much that I know that I'm always going to get the same sound so that I should have some consistency so I use that and uh, like I said Adobe uh, Premiere Pro is 90% of my workflow sometimes I use After Effects but really rarely because they keep adding so many more features to Premiere Pro that I don't need to really leave it that much for and I'm not doing super crazy effects for the most part if I do sometimes it's just still exports to Photoshop and I do some weirdness there Photoshop I use for the thumbnails uh, audition I use sometimes to clean up uh, Adobe audition is like a um, audio suite I use that sometimes to clean up the audio I use FL studio an old copy of that for all of the music and sound effects so they don't have to have any copyright problems so everything's 100% original I just make my own uh, music sorry to subject you to that but I can't afford to pay royalties and they'd take me off of YouTube if I did and uh, yeah do an Apple do a Mac uh, that is or a PC I don't care I'd say whatever you're already using stick with it and it doesn't matter it's just a tool at this point point. Um, and Adobe Premiere runs on both Apple or PC okay so do what you want whatever one you're already comfortable with I'd say do that if you're starting from scratch I'll tell you that most people are migrating to PC to run Premiere on nowadays because Apple is a little more concerned with phones than anything else and they're also a little pricey so this same system that I had custom built uh, would have literally I priced it out if it was an Apple and it would have been three times as much multiple multiple thousands of dollars more um, because you're paying for that Apple name so but oh god I probably start I'm not trying to start a whole argument my point is they're both lovely just like the camera it's more important to get in there and do some work who cares if uh, what the platform is all right so I think that's it I think I covered it all uh, yeah I had to think about that for a minute but yeah I think I covered it or enough and again I can always do another video if there's more questions which by the way Feel free to share uh, your comments in the old comment section below, either about this video or your experience with filming on the trail and outdoors. And also, as always, any ideas for future Sin Chats videos would be greatly appreciated so we can keep the conversations going. So until next time, I'm Syntax77. Have fun out there.